times. The only reason that happens is perhaps if there's a report. So I'm a bit intrigued as to uh, what the goal umpire is doing that's over there. Gibson incident, Mick. Maybe, yes, yeah. maybe. That's maybe sort of, um, that was what the free kick was for. Maybe the, maybe the central umpire saw it and the goal umpire. So we'll uh, try and get that word from the umpires after the game. Don't forget, after the uh, end of this match, the final siren, we'll be having the... Uh, Wrap up of the GDFL, the Ballerine and the Geelong Football League, and also we'll be uh, covering the two AFL games. Uh, we believe that Geelong are in a bit of strife at uh, Shell Stadium and uh, against Melbourne. Who, they had a good lead, the Cats, but we believe the Demons are fighting back. We'll get that score shortly, and uh, Essendon are in control at the MCG. And uh, we'll also be talking to Scott McDonald and also Brett Pollard from the Bell Post Hill Football Club, the coaches, who will uh, certainly be celebrating, I would believe, their first victory this afternoon because they've got a commanding lead at three-quarter time. Adam Sheridan and Paul Camerato had the Eagles boys for a very long time in that huddle. But uh, they can't really say much more, can they, boys? They can just sort of, they've got to get on the ground and try and no, do what, something different. <coughs> what would you do there, Mick? A three-quarter of time, you're that scored in. Would you, would you make wholesale changes or would you just sort of go back to basics where you started before the game and just try and play the last quarter and the best you can do, I guess? I think that's what it is. I just got to go man on man and, and hope to stem a bit of the tide and kick a few goals ourselves and put a bit of respectability in the scoreline. You just got to really throw caution to the wind there, Mick. You just take chances, you handball, you run, you, you just do all the things that, that you have to do. If they work, they work, and you look a bit better. If they don't work, you're not going to be any worse off, really. You don't want it to become a blowout, though. I mean, a bit yeah. of a dent to the confidence if you lose by 100 <laughs> points at That's first right. day. Well, the start of the final term in the GDFL match day 99 between Eastern Suburbs and Bell Post Hill. And kick off the ground quickly by Hancock. Was out towards centre wing social club side. Richie's good pick up, but he's got Troy Feldman against him. Brett Pollard, Brett, Brett Feldman, Sean Simmons. They're raffling it. Again, Simmons goes towards uh, uh, the good lead by Burging in front of Andy Hill and Carlo Burging takes the mark. That was a terrific one grab mark. The ball in front of his face and uh, never what? looked like missing. Mixed turned around. Interesting to note there that five Velvo Seal players were running and there were five Eastern Suburbs players behind them. <laughs> Lorry pointed that out to me, and I saw it. <laughs> well, the desired result for Bell Post Hill. They're, they're good coaches, these two. These two are very good coaches, aren't they? I think they can get a job. Carlo Burging has it. He'll be kicking from about 50, and uh, he comes in pretty deliberate. He's kicked one goal this afternoon. Goes a little short kick towards Pala, chopped off though by Damien Williams, and he'll be able to clear the footy for the Eagles. But he hasn't got much to kick to because he's looking long and he had three Bell Post Hill players. So he looks to go short to Scotty Gibson who goes to short to Shane Bailey at half back. They need some players to push up. DeLang's still standing at centre half back with Camarado and Peters. He goes now towards Paul Evans who's at least making an effort there and well. So uh, Geelong is up by a point at the Shell Stadium we believe. So we go towards half forward now for the Eagles. But Cop down by a point actually. Thank you from the studio there. Geelong down by a point at Shell Stadium. Coppick who has got lead poisoning like Scott McDonald, goes to Messina, who's not far behind either. They'll all be seeing a doctor tomorrow. Pollard, who's probably nearly going to have to have that leg amputated. He's got so many kicks. Troy Felburn goes towards Brother Brett again. It's the Cracker Brothers show. And Brett Felburn takes the mark at half forward. Felburn sees the lead from full forward. Oh. And he honours that lead. Well, oh, I'm fine. Ill Illich probably uh, paid a bit of a charity there. The mark was paid. The whistle was in the mouth before the ball was taken. But oh. uh, he allows the play on. And uh, a little short chip kicker gone across to Lurie, who's gone into the, uh, well, into the hole, they call it, between centre-half forward and half-forward flank. And uh, he's now got the ball 35 metres out. So Lurie of Bell Pastel and uh, really make a, an early goal is just not what uh, Eastern Suburbs want against them. We probably haven't got much chance as it is now, but lucky they're missing a few. Yes, the ball in the goal square. Second grab, the umpire's paid the mark. Now, it, it's... Amazing that uh, some of the marks that he hasn't paid have been much more clear-cut than that. Even um, the, yeah, the one before, just that one there, that Illich took, uh, it fumbled it, and early on in the game he was paying marks that we were clearly hanging on to, and both sides were clearly hanging on to, and he wasn't paying them. However, at the uh, two-minute mark of the first quarter, Simmons it is. Simmons has kicked the goal for Bell Post Hill, and uh, that's the first of this uh, final quarter. Buckley's the gaming centre quarter. 17 goals, 18 Bell Post, still they lead Eastern Suburbs 7-10, and we're almost three minutes now into the final quarter. 120 playing 52, and certainly not what the Eagles wanted in this first this uh, first couple of minutes of the final term, but certainly what the Panthers wanted. And uh, Mick, you better get that back ready, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, back to the centre, Delang back in the ruck for Eastern Suburbs, up against Brett Delzeal. 
who has uh, taken over from Shea Walker in the second half and done very well. Going up, both can neither get an effective tap. Paul Evans runs through the middle. Handball was a little bit slick there for Damien Williams. Hurst gets the ball away. Bailey, uh, umpire Cliss Elder nearly have to pay that, wouldn't he? <laughs> Yeah, Tommy he has. <laughs> third, third attempt, and uh, Shane Bailey took the grab. <coughs> Inside the defensive 50, and uh, he plays on now. Goes long towards centre wing. Pollard is in front, stands his ground, and takes a two-grabber. Brett Pollard, and 50. Very undisciplined. Very like undisciplined. Shannon Ritchie's, I believe that is, who has given away the 50-metre penalty. Quickly, other scores in the GDFL. Bannockburn, 15-9-99 lead. North Geelong, 3-9-27. So they've stopped to a walk. Werribee Central's 18-14-122 have stepped on the gas. Belmont Lions, 10-6-66. Anarchy, 10-8-68. Carrio, 12-12-84. And Thompson, 8-12-60 lead. At Geelong West, 7-10-52. So some close games there. And we'll get GFL on the Ballerina in just a minute as Pollard comes in from 40 metres out. Puts it to the teeth of goal. It's over the pack and it's through for one behind. To the co-coach of the Panthers. And they go now to 17, 19, 121. They lead Eastern Suburbs. 7, 10, 52. Buckley's Entertainment Centre final quarter scoreboard. We've been playing nearly five minutes in this final term. Watson. Gets it short to Paul Camarotto on the bounce in the back pocket. Goes short to Lang at half-back. Has to sit and wait for it. He does so. Telegraphs the handball back to Camarotto. who ran past. Now goes on the left boot towards Sean O'Leary right in front of us. And Coppy gets it out of bounds on the fall. Yes, I think it was. was, says umpire Habib, the boundary umpire. And Xavier Coppy right in front of us. And the Zylideo commentary box will go with the right boot towards Sean Simmons. It's just too easy at the moment for the Panthers. Sean Simmons takes the grab at half-forward. Simmons sees a little while he's... Uh, Actually kicked the ball into the nest of Eastern Suburbs players, but are they going to be able to get the ball away? Finally, Evans picks it up, runs away. Good work, young fella. Kicks the ball to centre-half forward, but the only fella there is uh, Miller for Bell Post Hill. The ball's on the ground. It's uh, hotly contested. The umpire has found one in the middle of that. It's going to Eastern Suburbs by his uh, the way he's pointing. It's gone to Interbong, who takes the kick, runs on quickly, drives to uh, who he sees the loose player on half forward, can't take the mark, recovers well. And uh, the ball is, uh, well, it's in dispute on half forward. Come on, umpire, get the ball out. Finally, uh, blows the whistle 30 metres from goal for Eastern Suburbs and uh, will have the ball thrown up. Umpire waiting for the ball. Finally gets it. Simon Conley, last man up for Bell Pass still. Umpire puts the ball up. Umpire Clissold. Down it comes. Conley tries to crash his way through the pack. Can't do so. Finally, a handball comes out to Miller. Short kick to Dalziel. Plays on quickly. The call from the umpire. And finally, Bell Pass still through Fairchild. Kick the ball to centre wing. Coppock just can't take the mark. Well done. Sean O'Leary playing the ball. Should be a free kick. Held without the ball, surely. And uh, O'Leary... Probably made sure the umpire saw it, certainly, but the uh, kick was warranted. Sean O'Leary, true centre wing. Goes back, oh, he's uh, taken a bit of a chance, but uh, it's come off because Messina was bearing down on the, the young man in uh, Peters there. The Peters equal to the task. In the true centre of the ground here at Myers Reserve. Plays on now, kicks the ball wide to the other side of the ground. DeLang is on his own. Oh, put down a mark he should have taken. And... Uh, Bell Postel, the opportunity here to clear the ball away. But Eastern Suburbs, they're working very hard to their credit. But finally, it's come out through uh, Brett Pollard. Kicks the ball, looking for the safety of the boundary line on out of centre wing. And, uh, well, it didn't quite get there. It kept going. Pollard himself followed up. Now continues, picks up the ball, gets it across to uh, Lurie. Lurie in support there, but I think the players are going up and down the one spot there at the moment, <laughs> Jason. A bit tired, I think. I, I think there's a few tired boys, and it's uh, seven minutes into the final quarter. Well, it's uh, been a, a long, warm day here at Myers Reserve this afternoon. First uh, round of GDFL football up in the ruck. Well, DeLang went up and then got the footy as well. Hancock has got it at half back. Quick kick on his left boot. Pretty wide. Is it going to bounce in? Yes, it does. Listen, so it was with the numbers. They punch it forward towards Richie's. Went left, then came back. Right, goes on the left boot. Short little kick. He's OK. McCormack takes it. About 50 metres out. Fairchild following him there on the mark. Open goal square. Stevenson gets back there. It's going to be one-on-one. Ian Dalziel. Good kick by McCormack. Through for one behind, though. Good for distance. Not for accuracy. What's he kicked today? 3-4. He's kicked three goals, four. So, three goals, four, two. Adrian McCormack, and they go to 7-11-53. Eastern Suburbs, they trail post till 17-19-1-21. Don't forget that Eric Laurier myself will be giving 3-2-1 for our Carrington Hotel Player of the Day this afternoon. I will leave Mick out because he might be a bit biased, but... I don't, we, couldn't figure an Eastern Suburbs player. Well, it's kicked back in, and uh, Prevail 
has uh, got it. He's got it shepherd by Hancock. He just uh, kicks it off the ground. He did have time to pick it up. O'Leary's there, gives it back to Williams. Back onto the left boot, kicks it wide towards Hunter, and he's able to take the mark uncontested. Can handball over the top to Camarado. Sets Banana a task. He's okay. He wanted to go left, then right. He gets back, rides a bump, goes on the right there again. Went a long way and has missed just to the near side for one behind. Had it for a long time there, Paul Camaro. There was calls from downstairs to for too too long, too far. But he didn't go too many paces. No, he didn't go too just far. Just went around a couple, didn't he? <laughs> but it's uh, 7 13.55. In fact, sorry, 7 12.54 it is. And uh, it is 17 19 1 21 Bell Post Hill. So Simon Connolly to do the kick in for Bell Post Hill. A little whisper Geelong by a goal, did I hear? Geelong by a goal. Now from the kick in, Gary Fairchild, well. He'll be, he'll be uh, very fortunate if he doesn't get it taken off him, but no, the umpire uh, allowed it to stand. Fairchild in the back pocket for Bell Post Tilt. Taking a long time, and I think, uh, as we said before, players are getting very tired now. There's nowhere near as much movement as there was earlier, but Fairchild kicks to centre wing. Up high was Hancock. Can't, can't take the ball. Comes down to Peters. Peters tries to weave his way through the back. Does a good job, the young man. Gets the ball forward to some degree, but there's uh, a very educated handball there for Belpas Till by, uh, was it Del Seal? Flick the ball toward the boundary, and uh, the boundary umpire will bring the ball back into play. It's Almost 10 minutes into the final quarter. The Buckley's scoreboard, 17-18. Bell Post Hill, Eastern Suburb, 7-12. Ball comes back in. Peters went without it. Ball on the ground. Players, uh, well, I so thought couldn't find an umpire then, but one umpire is <laughs> running away, the, umpire, the other umpire running towards the ball, and uh, umpire Clissold will uh, take control. Peters gives it back to umpire Clissold, and... Uh, the game will continue. Right in front of the social club here at Myers Reserve. Delang, lovely tap down. The ball comes to Camarado. Looks for someone to give it off to. Handball too strong. The uh, player there in Williams comes back on the ball. Now it stacks on the mill. And umpire Clissold again. Still in front of the uh, social club here. True centre wing will come in and take control of the ball. So big pack around this uh, ball up. The contest, Delang and Walker. Delang gets it down towards McCormack, who's obviously up the ground a little bit. Intervong gets around a couple, looks for somebody on the hands, then goes the boot towards centre half forward, coming out Del Zeal, chopping it off firstly. Oh, oh. Adam Martin, be careful, Morris Stevenson. Oh. But I think that could have been 50 that so, But he took so long to blow the whistle. He did. And uh, obviously Stevenson thought it was play on. It wasn't. It goes to Pollard, who kicks it around oh. the corner to Lurie. If he can get it inside to Messina, he can go away, but he does so now. Plays on oh, Messina, oh. has to get around Peters. Got one high, did he? Yes, he did. And Ange Messina will take it. Just inside the centre square. It's on the attacking side. And he's got Pollard wide. Goes to him now. Can uh, drill it with the left boot. The lead's on towards Brett Feldman. Can't get it with one hand. Bailey back there and also Simmons. But he's out of bounds. And will be a throw in in the left forward pocket for Belpo still attacking the southern end of this final term. And they've got a comfortable lead by 67 points. Boundary throw in now. Delang and Simmons, the two number 29s. Delang gets it down. Feldman reads the play. That's Brett. Tries to tap it back to the advantage of his teammates. Camarado chops it off. Eastern so with the numbers. Little toe pokes okay towards Delamonica. Alfie Delamonica high kick towards Devong. Sets him a task. Coming Connolly. Double fister. Takes the mark. And the end play on. Connolly goes along with the left boot. Back to whence it came. And mark. chopping it off is Sean Braniff. Inside the defensive 50, and he'll be able to clear once again for the Eagles. There's a handball quickly to Bailey. Bailey for Eastern Suburbs kicks towards centre wing. Oh, pushed into the, the mark, surely. It's a free kick there to uh, Riches of Eastern Suburbs. Uh, Jason, uh, Jason Colley, Steve Simon Colley, right in the middle of his back, and uh, he gets the free kick. Plays on quickly, sees the lead in the centre of the ground, uh, and that's Gibson taking the mark for Eastern Suburbs. Gibson. Out of side of the ground, true centre wing, looking for options. There's not a lot of movement now. Players are getting pretty tired. And here's McCormack, takes the mark. Handball quickly to uh, Camarado. Camarado, not a good kick. Intercepted by, uh, that looks like Brett Pollard. And away he goes, that long driving left foot kick. But young Peters, he's, he's done very well all day. And uh, I thought he was paid the mark. In fact, uh, he's been paid a mark or free kick. And uh, stops another onslaught from Belpost Tilt on half-back flank. Out of side of the ground, Peters. Sees the player loose on centre wing. It's uh, Riches again. Drives it long towards centre half forward. But uh, contested mark. Ball comes to ground. Nobody can get clear. Finally, it's uh, pushed out. And it's uh, Connolly again. Very strong in this last quarter on half back. Drives the ball to centre wing. And uh, young Peters again. He's uh, 
doing a good job. McDonald back on the ground. Scotty McDonald from 50. Goes for goals. He's had a pot shot. It's a magnificent <laughs> kick from the 50 metre line. Just back on the ground. And uh, Scott McDonald kicks his second for the day. But uh, it's certainly slowed down the game in this final quarter. Buckley's Gaming Centre. Scoreboard 18-18. Bell Post Hill. 18-19. Is it 1-27? Uh, 7-12-54 for Eastern Suburbs, and that's uh, McDonald's second goal. Well, they're yeah. just uh, sort of up and down footy at the moment, well, isn't I it, boys? 13 and a half minutes in. Guys running up and down the one spot at the moment. It's, it's fairly warm out there, Jason. It's the first game of the year, and uh, interest has probably gone out of, out of the game as well. And, uh, you know, they're just uh, going through the motions, I think, at the moment. Well, Walker, uncontested, gets it down towards Messina, who's still running and played a pretty good game this afternoon. Quick hands towards Lurie. That came from Simmons. Steve Lurie at 50, runs in, can have Loves two in goal, a minute. Stuffer. And... Goal. <laughs> I think Mick Gillick wanted the goal too, so he's taking it. <laughs> and uh, Stephen Leary won't be buying Mick Gillick a beer after the game. And uh, I'll tell you what, Mick will not want to miss this. Now, he's marked it on the goal line. He's around on a 45-degree angle. He's missed it. Uh, he's no, it. it's touched, it's is it? It's hit the post. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, another behind there. 18 21, 28 bell post tilt. Eastern Suburbs 7-12-54. I've got to uh, question that umpiring decision there. I mean, that guy marked that ball fair in the middle of the goal square and they put him around behind <laughs> him the around. post. Yeah. I, don't know, yeah, I don't know how you come to that, that arrangement. Well, the kick in has come out towards half-back and Simmons has come over for the bell hill to make sure that it is out of bounds for a throw-in instead of Eastern Suburbs being able to take it away. Now thrown in, Williams and Simmons. And Essendon are leading the Swans by 80 points at the MCG. David Peters takes it away for Eastern Suburbs, back in board, but there's Brett Pollard once again. He takes the mark in front of Scotty Gibson. On the centre wing, right in front of the long radio commentary box. He plays on now, looking for something further afield. Does so. Goes long. Coming out Illick and getting back there also was Simmons. Off the hands. Kick off the ground by Watson. Wasn't too far. Goes towards Brett Feldman. Loses it. Bailey's there. And he bowed to handball back to a standing start. Damien Williams gets around Illick and can run from the back pocket wide. Looking for Simon Hunter. McDonald's against him. McDonald made up a lot of ground there. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Hunter, oh, great play. Gets away from Scott McDonald's. Got a bit of time too. Had Watson in support. Also Delica on centre wing on the outer side. He goes long towards centre half forward now. McCormack and Fairchild. Fairchild in front. Santeri <laughs> don't mind. And Gary Fairchild takes the one-hander in front of Adrian McCormack. Yes, great work, Gary Fairchild. It's been a great battle down there, but I think the honours are now in uh, Fairchild's favour. That's got to be a free kick to Messina. Unfortunately, uh, Sean O'Leary ran straight back into the, the face of him, and uh, that's a free kick. Handball to Brett Pollard, and away go Bell Post Hill again. Does look like uh, Lurie again. Lurie, the short kick, and here go Bell Post Hill, this time through Hurst. Hurst sees a lead there from Illy. Can he reach it? Not quite. The ball uh, heading toward the boundary. The boundary umpire is not within Cooey, so uh, I don't know what will happen. Illy sees a little... Oh. Well, he sees a short pass in there, and it's... Uh, a great effort from uh, Burjink, it looks like. Has taken the mark, uh, well, he's only 25 metres away, but he's uh, on a very acute angle, and this will be uh, a very good goal. But uh, right in front of the scoreboard here, which is 18-20 to 7-12, Bell Post Hill Way, and Burjink, right footer on the wrong side of the ground. Approach is pretty good. What's he done with it? Keep one behind. So that's his second behind. One goal, two to Burjink. He hasn't had a bad sort of a day. So on the Buckley's Gaming Centre scoreboard, Bell Post Hill, 18-21, 1-29. They lead Eastern Suburbs 7-12, and that's 54. Pretty hard spot there to kick a goal from Eric in that pocket. Well, uh, your local knowledge yes, tells me that. Yes, yes, uh, You won't have Mick Ellick in that pocket on the on Tuesday night then, Laurie. No, You're getting him from there. somewhere else. <laughs> Dean Watson kicking in for Eastern Suburbs. Short is OK. Finds Andy Hill. Uncontent in between the full back and centre half back. Drives it long towards centre wing. The lead's on by McCormack. Has to make up a lot of ground, though. And Bevan Hurst can stand there and take the mark easily. Hands it off quickly to Simon Connolly. Gets it on the left boot wide towards Brett Felbin. And he takes the mark in front of Bailey. Drills it back in towards Messina. Standing and taking the mark just inside 50. And Messina will line the goals up. And uh, he has kicked one this afternoon. Early in the game. And we'll have a chance for goal number two from about... Uh, well, he's kicking just on 50, I would believe. 
Just on the outer side, half forward flank goes in now. Good kick for distance. Oh, I think he's drilled it. Good kick. A great kick. kick. And uh, his second goal. And the 19th for Bell Post Hill. They go to 19-21, 135. And they lead the visitors, 7-12-54, who are Eastern Suburbs on the Buckley's Gaming Centre. Final quarter scoreboard, it's 18 and a half minutes into this final term. And boys, I just have to be a little bit careful here, I think, Eastern Suburbs. Mick, you haven't said much in this last quarter yet. <laughs> we might spend the whole year trying to boost up ever since the way we're going. <laughs> well... It's not uh, Mick. Mick, you're you're a bit behind the eight ball with the number of practice matches you're able to play. It's it's probably showing a bit here. Uh, we played three. We played a couple between ourselves, so I don't think that's the case. But maybe our fitness is showing out. But I don't think we've gone too bad this quarter. But we look better with Paul Camerado playing in the centre, and I was a bit dumbfounded that he wasn't there in the third quarter. But that's the way it goes. Well, from the, uh, the the throw up in the middle, the ball's been uh, hotly contested, still inside the centre square. And it's uh, between centre wing and half forward flank, slightly towards the northern end of the ground to which Eastern Suburbs are kicking in this final quarter. Umpire Cliss Isles has called for the ball. A large number of players around the ball. DeLang goes up against, uh, that was Walker. Eastern Suburbs get the ball clear, kick towards uh, half forward flank. But uh, T. Connolly's played a very good last quarter, been very strong there, and uh, he hits the ball again toward the boundary line. It's running uh, with. Free kick in the back there, not Could've paid been. to uh, Riches of uh, Eastern Suburbs. And uh, perhaps the umpires are tiring as well as the players by the look of things because they're uh, finding it fairly difficult. And it has been hot and the players have uh, done a great job. From the throw-in comes to Camerota. Handballs uh, basically straight up in the air. Finally, Lurie gets the ball. Handball, uh, unfortunately, can't quite get the mark there in Martin. And it's Eastern Suburbs through. Evans drives the ball toward the goal square. Well, that was interesting because uh, the umpire had the same view as we did. I felt that the player was held without the ball, but the mark was clearly taken there for Eastern Suburbs by Stevenson, is it? Mm -hmm. And uh, the opportunity here to kick his second goal. And uh, showed a bit of strength there, Mick. He did. He did. He's shown a bit of strength up there. A couple of times he's gone forward today, but uh, sometimes lacks a bit uh, in the chasing department, Morris. Well, for the second time today, he has kicked the goal and uh, a little bit of respectability uh, to Eastern Suburbs now in the, at the 20-minute mark of the final quarter. The Buckley's Gaming Centre scoreboard, 19 goals, 21. 135 for Bell Pass 2. Actually, I've got 19-20 on my scorecard against Eastern Suburbs, 8-12-60. And uh, really, the sting's gone out of the game now, Laurie. Yeah, certainly, Eric. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, there's, I'm not sure what they can do at the moment. Just play it out, I suppose, and hope to get Mick back and a few other, you know, they've got Collins to come back next week, I should imagine, Mick. I'm not going to make up 75 points. <laughs> today, Laurie. Not yourself, but you, won't be, you probably won't be back next week, but Collins would be, wouldn't he? Uh, I, I hope so. I so, assume he'll get his clearance. So that certainly should should yeah. help. He's an on-baller, Mick, and, and he'd certainly give you a bit more drive around the packs where you really have missed out in the middle. That's true, yeah. Maybe you might be right before with the uh, fitness, so you missed out on pre-season games. Well, Camarado right from the middle, handball, goes towards centre-half forward, sitting a waiting hand. Cock Fairchild overran it as well, but it falls towards Feldman. Gets around Camerado. Can't quite pick it up though. Players just pretty tired. 21 minutes into the final term. Camerado gets it over the top towards centre half forward. Cossack runs onto it. Hancock's there also. Kick around the corner and goes towards the boundary line. It's going to be Coppick now. Can he get there and keep it in? He can. He's pretty close to the boundary line. Gets a great shepherd from Simon Connolly and goes towards Brett Pollard who takes a mark in front of David Peters, the captain of Eastern Suburbs. Now Pollard goes laterally towards Lurie and he takes the mark right in the middle of Myers reserve plays on quickly right foot kick high towards Hurst can take the mark in front and play on quickly around Delamonica tap on by McDonald tremendous to Hurst he better finish it off now because the coach did that beautifully and I think he has well there you go Bevan Hurst has kicked his second great tap on from the coach and they go to 20 goals, 21, 141 Bell Post Hill. And Decent Suburbs, 8, 12, 60. Buckley's Entertainment Centre. Final quarter scoreboard, 23 minutes gone in this final term. And uh, who do you play next week, Mick? North Geelong. North Geelong. Well, at home. They'll have to fight back next week, I think, Eastern Suburbs, because uh, currently they trailing by 81 points. I'll tell you what, in the context of the season, this is a very good-looking performance from Bell Post Hill. You'd be, I think you'd be much happier if you were Scott McDonald and Brett Pollard than oh, Paul Camerado and I Adam Sheridan. I think so. I think so. <laughs>
Back in the middle. Walker gets it down towards Messina. He dragged off the footy. No free kick. Peters dragged off the footy as well. No free kick. So that's consistency, I suppose. Then he gets one for over the shoulder. David Peters. Just outside the centre square on centre wing. He'll try and drive the Eagles forward. Yes, Peters worked very hard all day. So he's uh, Camarado, and I agree with you, uh, Mick. Camarado in the middle of the ground is certainly uh, a better-looking Eastern Suburbs, no doubt in my mind. It he's is. driven the ball to uh, full forward. Conley dragged off the ball, picked up by Del Zeal, gets a handball across, and uh, the kick, relieving kick from Belpost Hill is out of bounds on the full, and the ensuing free kick will go to Eastern Suburbs. And, uh, well, he tried to gain a little bit there was uh, Simon Hunter, but the umpire has forced him to go back over the boundary line and uh, take the kick again. So Hunter, it is of Eastern Suburbs. He's uh, outside 50, plays on there. Drives to, to the middle of the ground. It's a uh, good, good, uh, very strong mark on that occasion. And uh, really, it's something that uh, Eastern Suburbs have, have struggled to get some good, solid, strong marks around the, around the ground. And there's Murray, who started in the back line, takes a strong mark at basically the full forward position. And uh, we've already got... Uh, Stevenson, the defender, kicked a couple of goals and here's Murray, that started to defend another chance to kick a goal. So uh, Eastern Suburbs certainly thrown the players around quite a bit and the result is a oh, defender's shot. Kicked it like a defender. <laughs> <laughs> Put him back the, there. The, the question I'd like to ask Mick is uh, Adam Sheridan, he's played down the forward line all day and you've got a fair hiding. and wouldn't you think he'd be up the ground a bit? I think he's went on the bench for a, a portion of that third quarter. Yeah, yeah but he's, I, I just like to see him up the ground. I mean, he's obviously a good player and footy's not getting there, Mick. Yeah, I know. He started in the forward pocket the first half and, yeah, I'd probably do a tend to agree with you there, Laurie. He probably could have come maybe up on the wing or put himself yeah, in the yeah. centre. Well, Pollard's moved the ball to Bevan Hurst on centre wing on the outer side. He goes long towards the uh, forward line. It's inside 50, Braniff. With that awkward-looking kicking style, he gets it wide towards the run of O'Leary and Kopik. Kopik seems to be doing it on the bit, tries to get around Sean O'Leary, does well. Now it's a foot race between the two, and he's done pretty well there, I think, Sean O'Leary, to push Kopik out and the ball as well. So uh, it's now 8 13 61. Eastern Suburbs, 20 21, 141 is Bell Post Hill. We've been playing 25 and a half minutes in this final term. And it's a boundary throw in at half forward for. The Panthers in front, Burging now. Hill works to the front. Williams gets it around onto the boot, goes long towards uh, Troy Feldman, who can take it uncontested right in front of the Bell Post Hill coach's box. And gets it to Glenn Travail, who's going to get wrapped up by uh, Hunter. Got the handball sort of away to Feldman, but it was OK. McDonald, oh, gave it quick. But uh, Feldman was pushed off the footy. In there, McDonald again, fights hard, gives it to Travail, gets around a couple. Good play, kick around the corner towards uh, half forward. And taking the mark is Burging. Plays on quickly, gives it to Hancock, puts him under pressure, got the bump away. And Eastern Suburbs, Hill to the wide open spaces at centre half back for Eastern Suburbs. Leading in the race of the ball is Adam Martin, taps it on beautifully towards Pollard, back to Martin. Oh, can Fats a goal? And uh, I think, well, oh. Oh, Shane Warne would have been very happy with that. Leggy. Great leggy, and it's gone through for one behind to Adam Martin. But to their credit, I guess, uh, Bell Post Hill, Laurie, they've persisted all day. They've flipped the handball out and perhaps they're overdoing it a little now, but they've obviously got a team plan and they've stuck to it. Yeah, I think so, Eric. looks like it's a style of play they're playing. They try to keep kick it long, keep it in the corridor, and I think the standard of the football, I think if you can do that, you're going to win more games, you're going to lose. From the kick-in, Bailey takes it. Gets it to Camerota. Camerota goes the long driving kick over the centre to Murray. Can't take the mark. Della Monica runs onto the crumbs. But a good contest there. He uh, does well, gets the ball, drives it towards the full forward position, but there's no one there for Eastern Suburbs until Sheridan crashes through uh, three or four players on the left foot, has a ping at them, but uh, he also, he's been really offline today. One goal, five to Adam Sheridan. Certainly not his day uh, kicking for goal. And uh, at the 27-minute mark of the final quarter, the Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard is eight goals, 14, 62 Eastern Suburbs. They trail Bell Post till 20, 22, 142. Well, I can tell you that on a normal day, 36 behinds at Bell Post Hill is about right. There hasn't been a breath of wind all day, and we've True. still had 36 behinds. So uh, a lot of scoring shots this afternoon. 42 for Bell Post Hill. Well, I think if Bell and Post Hill had suburbs. a kick straight, it would have been an embarrassment if it's not there. It's true. Is it, agree is it an embarrassment, Mick? Uh, it's getting there. Oh, well, we'll talk to uh, Michael O'Leary after the game on what uh, Eastern Suburbs can do for next week. 
Feldman goes up. Troy Feldman had his name written all over the footy. Took the mark and got it to uh, Jimmy Cracker from Phil Cracker because he gets it to his brother Brett who handballs at the Pollard who will have to have a leg amputated because he's using it too much. He runs three bounces. He's at fifth. Has four bounces. He better kick the goal now. He's had five bounces. He's just making sure that he can kick the goal and he has. <laughs> Brett Pollard, five bounces straight through the middle and has done it and has kicked his second. <laughs> and that is just too easy. And uh, they kick their 21st goal post until their 21 22, 148. They lead Eastern Suburbs 8 15. Or is it 8? It might be 8 15 63. 8, 8, 14, it is. I think is it 8 15? I think it might be 63 on the Buckley's Entertainment Centre. Final quarter scoreboard. I think they might have made their first blemish on the scoreboard here at Bell Post Hill because I think it's 8-14. I think they got one each way. I think they've got one each way there. Yeah. It's 8-14-62, playing 21-22-148. And 29 minutes gone in this final term. Ball thrown up once again. Up goes Walker, but he's beaten on this occasion. Uh, it, for the tap, comes down to uh, Feldman. Oh, they're doing it far too easily now. Little chip pass has come across there to, that's Travail. Travail, he thinks he'll come into the goal kicking act. No, he doesn't quite get the distance. Illich takes the mark from behind his opponent and off the left foot, pops through his fifth goal. And uh, <coughs> that's uh, the uh, 22nd goal on the Buckley's Entertainment scoreboard. Bell Post Hill, 22-22, 154. They lead Eastern Suburbs 8-14-62 and uh, really it's becoming an embarrassment now, Mick, I've got to say. <laughs> Two goals ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, um, Mick's standing up there. Don't jump off, Mick. Hey, poor old Mick. Yeah, it's don't jump off. It's not high enough. <laughs> but, they're, but they're certainly playing a good brand football. They are. And, and you know, I think their fitness is and, absolutely And they're sharp. running on at the moment, you know, and that's making a great difference. Well, back in the middle. We've been playing 30 minutes. And it's probably 30 minutes too long for the Eagles at the moment. It's going to be Shea Walker once again against Marty DeLang. Ball, ball's up. DeLang gets it down. Pushed back from Feldman. DeLang's kick partly smothered. Scotty Gibson kick, quick kick off the ground. Evans ripped off the footy by Adam Martin. And it will be a secondary bounce just on the attacking side of the centre circle for Eastern Suburbs. Thrown up now. DeLang. Goes up high, gets it down only as far as Gary Fairchild. Gets it wide to Bevan Hurst, who can handball it on to Brett Feldman. Feldman on the point of the centre square. And handball over the top to Pollard, who could probably finish it off again. Brett, can he? <laughs> oh, if you don't mind, up higher. And he has. For his third. And Bell Post Hills 23rd. They're 23 22, 160. And they now lead by 97 points. Eastern Suburbs 8, 15, 63. I was really coming here thinking oh, I might have picked a good match of the day, but as usual, I haven't. I knew something was going to go wrong, and the only thing it has is the unfortunate thing for Eastern Suburbs. And the good thing for Bell Post still, they're 97 points in front on the Buckleys and Entertainment final quarter scoreboard. Certainly couldn't have picked this on paper, and really, Laurie, it, it, it's, a, it's really an outstanding performance now by Bell Post still. Yes, Eric. Uh, you know. I just hope that they can go on from this. They promise a lot every year, and I don't know the quality of the opposition today, but certainly you can only say that they've played champagne football. You well, know. They, they've put their mark on the competition, I'd suggest today. Yeah, definitely. They've run in numbers, and their skill level's been reasonably good all day. From the tap down, it goes to Pollard, who gets it forward once again. Here's uh, Illich, gets a handball across to Messina, grabs a ball, well tackled by the Eastern Suburb defence, but Scotty McDonald is getting on the act. He has a pot shot, but right on the very last line of defence, it is Watson taking <laughs> the chest mark. Now he's trying to get room to kick the ball. The umpire certainly not going up to put, to put anyone oh. on the mark. So uh, Watson sees a player loose out on the centre, on halfback flank, and it's Williams, and a very tired Williams takes the mark, pops it across to Paul Camarado, and Camarado takes the mark. He uh, just chips it over to O'Leary, O'Leary in halfback flank. He kicks it towards half forward, and there's the siren to uh, hopefully relieve the agony for the Eastern Suburbs team and uh, even though the scores are very one side, I've got to say a very good quality Geelong and District Football League match today. The final score on the scoreboard, Bell Post Hill 23-22, 160. Eastern Suburbs 8-15-63, but I would uh, bear some checking with goal umpires on that final score. So we believe it's 8-14-62 Eastern Suburbs, Bell Post Hill 23-22-160. And uh, we'll just see the goal umpires uh, come out to the middle and see if they do change that score. The goal kickers for Bell Post Hill, Mick Illick kicked five, 
three each to Brett Pollard and Brett Feldman. Two each to Scott McDonald, Sean Simmons and Bevan Hurst and also Ange Messina. And singles to Troy Feldman, Shay Walker, Paul Miller and Carlo Burging. While for Eastern Suburbs, three to Adrian McCormack, two to Morris Stevenson and singles to Paul Camarotto, Andrew Hill and Adam Sheridan. So it's 11 goal kickers for Belfast here, so they shared it around a bit. They certainly did. And uh, in the end, it has been a big win to uh, Bell Post Hill by 98 points. The Bell Post Hill boys are celebrating as they should be out in the middle. And uh, after a 98-point win you, on your home ground, you expect them to be pretty happy.